Uh, just by way of introducing, uh, uh, I'm Thomas Arnold from Tuft University's Human Robot Interaction Laboratory. Um, I've been uh, heartened by all the different backgrounds that are, are here today. My background is actually in philosophy and religious studies, and I came into robotics uh, fairly late uh, to start puzzling over what ethics means, what ethical decision making means for social robots, and I'm still puzzled by it. Uh, but this workshop is, uh, is, has already raised uh, so many interesting questions for me along those lines. But I thought I would start uh, just by, by trying to uh, put some type of general comment on, on all of the, the fascinating topics that we've covered. Uh, and as I've thought about it uh, over, over our uh, not so long break uh, between sessions, uh, the, the question came to me of, of you know, the overall theme of the workshop being sentimental machines. I, I think one thing that has uh, been a, a, a question threading through the first session was, where is sentiment? When are we, what are we locating? And I think all of the talks, both the keynotes and the lightning talks gave very interesting uh, pushback on typical or habitual ways of locating, especially this kind of idea of a some type of feeling machine that would replace a human being or uh, uh, occupy a space in a relationship one-to-one um, -one, uh, with a human being. And I think all of our talks in the, uh, along a number of interesting social locations and, and applications uh, gave you know, just some really fascinating ways of pushing back on that, of saying where where do we locate uh, sentiment um, when we when we picture sentimental machines? What does that uh, uh, come? What comes to mind? Uh, uh, as was mentioned, Kate uh, uh, started us off with with uh, her work and perspective on uh, sexuality and and robotics and kind of a turn to intimacy and what that does to show how uh, design reshapes the kind of cliches uh, and, and expectations that can inhabit uh, 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 the bulk of, of public discussions and debate and kind of hot takes on, on what robots should or should not be used for uh, and you know underscores how, how design can really help us uh, resituate wh where the expectations are uh, for um, our own sentiments, what sentiment recognition is, and what the, the, the role of robots are. And that extended into talks about, uh, and, and Nadia's talk and Amit's talk on uh, things like pain, pain recognition, body awareness, uh, therapeutic contexts, uh, where it's not so simple to say, this robot either does or does not have a sentimental recognition, uh, but plays these in, in kind of these um, interstices between uh, uh, recognition and non-recognition, uh, uh, familiarity with one's body and non-familiarity, and we you know see that in um, talk uh, Louis Philippe's talk on uh, uh, these various projects, including Inferno of of. Uh, the experience, uh, and I think we, uh, Michael, uh, I hope is here in this session, who, who's actually been a performer in the Inferno session of, of what it's like to be controlled uh, by a um, exoskeletal uh, device uh, that, you know, these experiences are not always foregrounded. Uh, and, and our lightning talks just continued this in, in some really interesting pushing on the directions of uh, uh, robots that defy our attention, defy our gaze. Uh, we, we saw uh, robots that only move when one is not looking at them, not when one is looking at them. Uh, that, that defies a lot of expectations in, in HRI. Uh, the idea of vibration as non-figurative and non-utilitarian, uh, that, that, that it's a mode of communication that is in a, 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 an indefinite space of, uh, uh, is, this, uh, is this device, is this machine um, trying to communicate uh, with them, uh, amongst themselves or with human beings, uh, uh, really pushing beyond 
uh, some of the uh, typical natural language uh, cliches that might might happen in social robotics, uh, along with parasitism, uh, a fascinating kind of idea of uh, uh, thinking about um, uh, organisms and biological mechanisms of parasitism as as a as a modality of, of communication, uh, and and also the idea of a relic and uh, communicating symbolically as an icon. Uh, with historical resonance as both a, a kind of historical um, preservation, but also uh, something that is uh, emotionally engaging and, and working on multiple, multiple channels. So this is just a sample. I encourage you to go to the website to look at the actual uh, talks and PDFs uh, and, and the, the bios of our, our keynote speakers. But I, I, I would put it over that overarching theme and, and would invite um, uh, uh, refinement and enhancement of, 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 that, of, that, uh, of that general description. But at least for me, I, I would say it was a really fertile way to reshape expectations. In terms of drawing, drawing from the, the session, our, our interactive session on imagination building and evaluation, we separated into uh, some icebreaker groups, but then went into three main groups, uh, one imagination, one building, one evaluation, to think about these different phases of design. And I, 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 I think I'll refer people to Discord and, and we can see about uh, putting the notes up there, but uh, I would just say for now, I, I think from many of the challenging questions that were raised about uh, these three processes, I think it's just, I'll, I would just uh, invite us to keep thinking about on what terms these phases of design need to be kept distinct. Uh, and, and some other kind of questions that, that uh, grew a, a little bit out of the evaluation uh, section, but, but I would just wanted to put onto the table and and uh, have uh, as part of what we continue to think about in the session two uh, is part of these uh, design challenges to expectations. I think to me, one theme that came out was that the human-human interactions, uh, again, are not being supplanted in any simple fashion. Uh, which, which to me just under, you know, raises uh, this first, further question of, well, what, what are the, the various human-human interactions that are uh, helping to sustain or helping to define what are being um, produced as sentimental machines and, and these various interesting projects that uh, I think really, instead of crowding out human-human interaction, are actually inviting more and more thought about Oh, what, what, and I, I refer to the ghost work, which, you know, ha has a, a different application in terms of labor for some of algorithmic systems, but I think is a, a term that I, I just kept thinking about in terms of uh, what kind of human human interactions are sentimental machines inviting us to uh, recognize and, 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 and highlight as being necessary when it comes to these performances, when it comes to these exhibitions, when it comes to these various applications. And so along those lines, I, I, I kind of uh, maybe uh, am, am introducing phrases that are too long and unwieldy, but the para-experimental, it strikes me as someone that's in a lab and, and appreciating these different performative elements. What are, what are the human-human interactions at the margins of uh, whether it be uh, uh, experiments that people hear about or see from a distance or, or have you know, heard at, at, at one remove or another, uh, as well as uh, watching uh, a performance or watching without necessarily being the direct interactant. Uh, uh, that seems to be part of the, the themes of the talk of session one, uh, have some really interesting implications along those lines about where, where the margins are of insight uh, whether it be you know a therapeutic setting, where are the therapists, where are the uh, clinicians, where and 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 how are they dealing with, um, and and I, we can get into that in the the panel I'm sure later. Uh, where are these uh, uh, different positions? What are they? Um, what can they uh, shed light on for for our questions? Uh, 
And just for, for myself, uh, I, I will kind of add to this uh, from our own work at the lab in, in looking at robot touch. One thing that we have, I've kind of compared the, the, the much more <laughs> uh, exciting uh, uh, scene from Inferno to our um, rather humdrum experiment. But the, the idea being that uh, in human interaction, even so, something so simple as this PR2, uh, touching someone on the back in a, in a uh, social setting, uh, our, our experiment on this was around uh, not the person being touched, or not touched, but the people observing it, uh, what, how they interpreted the touch, and what they thought about uh, the robot on the basis of it. Uh, so the identity is 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 again more of an uh, an observer or, or a, a someone that's uh, not directly experiencing robotic touch, but who is uh, looking on, making attributions, making judgments. And I think uh, again. Uh, the, the interesting material that we've discussed and, and questions that we asked to me, uh, you know, in, in, invite uh, uh, that type of question as well in terms of uh, what other uh, layers of interpretation, response and evaluation are going on.